Welcome to Pacific Endodontic Research Foundation. For the past five years, the Foundation has been the leading pioneer in developing innovative microscopic endodontic skills developed specifically for the endodontic assistant. By practicing these skills, you'll develop exceptional coordination, timing, and rhythm that will become invaluable to your doctor. Remember, you are an essential partner in the creation of endodontic excellence. The sophisticated use of the operating microscope in endodontics requires these exceptional assisting skills combined with advanced teamwork. The following demonstrations will walk you through, step by step, all the major skills you'll need to develop in order to work efficiently with your doctor. Proper positioning is critical for teamwork skills to develop. Both the doctor and assistant are able to sit upright and be completely comfortable during both surgical and non-surgical endodontic procedures using the microscope. Therefore, it's important to establish a standard protocol for positioning before starting every procedure. The patient is seated and placed in a Trendelenburg position. A small, soft pillow is placed behind the patient's neck. This is critical because endodontic procedure performed under the microscope frequently requires the hyperextension of the patient's neck. The soft pillow supports the neck and enables the patient to lean back without producing neck strain. The doctor then guides the patient through a range of motion exercise to be certain that the patient is capable of assuming the needed position without any discomfort. Finally, for conventional procedures, protective eyewear is placed on the patient. After the procedure is discussed with the patient and the patient is prepared, the doctor assumes an upright position and moves the microscope to fit his position. It's important that the doctor be in a completely upright posture with feet on the floor. The patient chair is elevated so that the doctor's knees can be placed under the chair. The doctor's failure to adequately position himself will result in his having to lean forward from the waist, producing back and neck strain. The patient chair is then raised or lowered so that the doctor has the patient's lips in focus at the highest microscope magnification. The doctor positions both armrests so that his arms are at rest at the correct height and in the correct position. Now that the doctor is comfortable in an upright position and the patient's lips are in focus, the doctor holds the microscope in place. The assistant positions herself in a similar upright and comfortable position. Notice that the assistant is equally upright and completely relaxed and comfortable. The assistant co-observer microscope is then moved to adapt to her position. The assistant is able to rotate the field of view control knob so that her two-point discrimination is in the correct orientation. After the assistant tells the doctor that her position is comfortable, both doctor and assistant perform the parfocaling exercise. When parfocaling is complete, the assistant adjusts both her chair's armrests so that her hands can be placed at the correct level and angle while at rest. Both doctor and assistant are completely upright, comfortable, and parfocaled. One of the secrets of efficient teamwork using the microscope for endodontic procedures is the use of a series of universal hand signals well practiced and understood by both doctor and assistant the doctor places his hands at the corner of the rubber dam frame and uses this as a reference point. This will enable the doctor to know where his hands are without looking away from his eyepieces. It is very important that the doctor develop the discipline to keep his hands at this location and resist the urge to move his hands by reaching or grabbing for an instrument. The universal hand signal for an instrument is best described as how the doctor configures his hand to accept an instrument. This is called the invitation. For example, the universal hand sign for the explorer is given like this. The assistant places the explorer in the doctor's hand. Her hand is at the end of the instrument, so that when she passes the instrument to the doctor, there is no hand contact, only the feel of the instrument. If the assistant's hand position is incorrect, confusion may develop over who has control of the instrument. Let's review. The correct transfer of the instrument depends upon an appropriate universal hand signal from the doctor and correct hand placement by the assistant. 
Notice that the Explorer is pointed in the correct direction and properly placed so that the doctor does not have to perform a secondary movement of turning the instrument. Notice that the assistant uses her left hand for passing. This will avoid passing over the patient's face with her hand and obstructing the doctor's view through the microscope. The return of the instrument to the assistant requires the same kind of discipline of motion. It's important that the doctor masters the habit of returning the instrument to the assistant without moving his hand. This is accomplished by making an easily identifiable motion with the instrument. It is a definite motion, sharp and abrupt, so that there is no question in the assistant's mind that the doctor is ready for a transfer. All future skill development depends on mastering this simple skill. Common errors include, number one, the doctor does not make a definite motion. Or number two, the doctor moves his hand away from the rubber dam frame. The doctor uses the rubber dam as a reference point. He is aware of his position without being able to see his own hand because of the point contact of his little finger on the rubber dam. If the doctor moves away from this position, he endangers the assistant's nearby hand and loses his positional orientation under the scope. Practice this skill repeatedly with the doctor until it becomes instinctual and automatic. When facility is gained in passing hand instruments, begin to practice more difficult passing procedures. The irrigation syringe is passed in this manner. Notice that after the universal hand signal for the irrigation syringe is given, the assistant places the syringe so that the doctor can depress the plunger with his index finger. The thumb is never used to express the contents of a syringe. The syringe is placed by the assistant with the irrigation needle pointed toward the correct location. As long as the doctor has not moved his hand, the syringe pass will be efficiently completed. Notice that if the assistant places the syringe in the wrong position, the doctor cannot reach the plunger and then must reposition the syringe. When returning the syringe to the assistant, the doctor makes a distinct motion by rotating the syringe without moving his hand. All syringes are passed this way. RC prep. EDTA. Alcohol. and aspirating syringes for drying the canal. Passing the handpiece depends upon correct placement of the doctor's cart. The doctor's cart is placed at the appropriate height and location so that the doctor can reach all devices on the cart without looking away from his eyepieces. Notice how the doctor's eyes move while keeping his head in position. Notice the importance of the movable armrest on the doctor's chair, since it provides a fixed reference point for the doctor's elbow when he reaches for the handpiece. The doctor should practice by using touch-and-go drills until he can demonstrate competence. This motion should be practiced by the doctor until it can be performed easily. The slow-speed handpiece is grasped at its base by the doctor's right hand, lifted from its holder, and pointed toward the assistant horizontally. The assistant takes the handpiece with her left hand, places the burr with her right hand, and then returns the handpiece to the doctor's hand. The burr is pointed in the correct direction so that the doctor does not have to reposition the handpiece. To change burrs, the doctor rotates the handpiece, pointing it away from the patient and the assistant. The assistant takes the handpiece by the end, exchanges the burr, and returns the handpiece to the doctor. When the series of burrs has been completed, the handpiece is returned to the assistant who removes the burr. The handpiece is returned to the doctor who places it back to its holder on the dental cart. Rapid exchanging of the doctor's mirror is one of the most important skills to develop because the mirror is necessary in performing many procedures using the microscope. In the beginning, the doctor may want to practice using a larger crown and bridge type mirror. 
Rapid replacement of new mirrors must take place without interruption. If the doctor has to stop, wipe, clean and dry his mirror and then place it back into the operative site, such an interruption will greatly prolong the procedure. Since the assistant is observing through her binoculars, a soiled mirror is immediately apparent to her. As soon as this occurs, the doctor slightly rotates the mirror handle and the assistant replaces the soiled mirror in one fluid motion. Notice that the assistant is using her little finger to take the soiled mirror. This technique must be practiced repeatedly until it is performed deftly. We will demonstrate this in slow motion. While the assistant suctions with her left hand, she cleans the soiled mirror with her right hand in preparation for the next exchange. Mastering this technique enables the doctor to work continuously with only momentary interruption. In this access of a maxillary molar, the mirror is moved toward the base of the rubber dam frame in order to create room for the high-speed handpiece. The microscope is then repositioned so that the image of the mirror gives the doctor and assistant an excellent view of the exact orientation of the tooth and the handpiece. From the wide angle view, you can see both the doctor and assistant are upright and comfortable and are able to access the tooth without interruption. In the posterior dentition, this example demonstrates how a mandibular second molar is accessed using the mirror, regardless of the position of the tooth in the mouth. You can see how a maxillary molar access is being refined by using the mirror. Extremely accurate access preparations are created by using these sophisticated teamwork skills. If the patient is a mouth breather, or if the mirror continues to be fogged, the assistant simply positions the suction so that the mirror is continually defogged. Passing files under the microscope is an extremely efficient method of transferring instruments. The key to the technique is an assistant who has knowledge about root canal anatomy and instrument sequencing. After the doctor estimates the working length from the radiograph, the assistant places the measured file in the correct order in her finger sponge, or endo ring. The finger sponge is placed on the assistant's left hand, and the initial file is placed at a perpendicular angle to the sponge. The assistant then places her endo ring into the site and next to the doctor's fingers, which are displaying the universal hand signal for file. Notice that he does not reach for the files or move his hand. The doctor allows the assistant to place the file between his thumb and forefinger. When contact is made, the doctor takes the file and holds it, but does not move. The assistant then withdraws the sponge and prepares for the next instrument by placing the next sequential file in a correct location. After instrumenting with a file, the doctor rotates the file with his fingers and points it toward the assistant, again without moving his hand. The assistant impales the file at a right angle into the sponge and then slightly rotates the sponge and places the next sequential file between the doctor's fingers. Again, the doctor takes the file. While the doctor is filing, the assistant is observing through the microscope and gaining valuable information. Whether additional smaller files will be necessary, whether precurvature will be needed, or whether a different kind of file will be needed. The importance of the assistant's armrest here is obvious. Notice how in performing the instrument passes, the assistant's left hand never crosses the doctor's view through the microscope. The case is temporized with cotton and have it. The doctor gives the universal hand sign for the rubber dam forceps to the assistant and the case is complete. We hope that this video instruction has clarified the skills needed to be developed to operate efficiently under the microscope. Practicing these skills with your doctor for even one week will result in rapid improvement in doctor-assistant teamwork skills.